Today I want to share with you an ancient natural remedy that's great for getting rid of a cold or flu. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well this is a very easy remedy to make and there's three variations and I'll show you all three but the basis for all three is just a simple onion. And as I said, this is an ancient remedy. This goes back to Roman times and maybe even before. The onion was really revered in ancient times and this remedy was used when people didn't feel well. And they would even hang onions in the room where the sick person was because they believed that the onion would draw out the illness from the person. And today we know that that makes complete sense because scientists have told us that the onion is very rich in antibacterial and antiviral properties. And it's these properties, these antibacterial and antiviral properties that help fight infection. And not only is the actual onion, the inside underneath the peel, rich in these antiviral and antibacterial properties, the onion skin is also very rich in these properties. So to make this remedy, we're gonna use the entire onion, skin and all. If you have an organic onion, great. But if your onion is just conventionally grown, don't worry, because onions are in the category of what's known as the clean 15. And so they generally have very little pesticides on them. Now this isn't one of those recipes that's set in stone. Basically any onion will work. If you have just sort of a medium sized one like this that I can fit in my hand, that's perfect. If your onions are on the small side, then just use two. Uh, and if your onions are large, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. It's all gonna come out great in the end. Now all you're gonna wanna do is just get a little soup pot and we're just gonna pull off some of this skin. Sorry, I think that's kind of sounds kind of crunchy probably, but we're just gonna get off some of the skin to make it a little easier to cut. So just make sure you save all those onion skins and go ahead and put them in your soup pot. Then we'll just go ahead and cut our onion and there's really no specific way, but we just wanna expose the flesh and but leave on the skin. Then just go ahead and add all these cut pieces to your soup pot. Perfect. Alrighty, I want to get every little last piece of the skin there. Then you want to get 32 ounces of water. That's four cups. And you just want to go ahead and pour this right over your onions. Now at this point, this is your very basic remedy. And you can take this over to your stove and put this on high, bring it up to a boil, cover it, turn it down to low, and let it simmer for 30 minutes. Then after 30 minutes, you'd strain out your onions and you'll have your onion broth. At that point, you can drink it simply as is. Some people find it a little strong and so it can be helpful to maybe add in a little sea salt and a little ghee. Adding these things can make it very palatable. And sea salt is great because it's rich in minerals and ghee is simply a type of clarified butter where the milk solids are removed. So it's very easy to digest because sometimes when people have a cold or flu, any dairy product or specifically like with the milk solids in it can make people feel a little nauseous or create some phlegm. So by using the ghee, which is very easy to digest where all the milk solids have been removed, it helps you assimilate the nutrients in the onions and also give the uh, onion broth a nice flavor. And if for any reason you don't like the mouth feel of having a little bit of fat in a hot broth, you can put your broth with your ghee and your sea salt in a blender and whirl it and make it into a little bit more of a frothy drink. And then you can drink it that way. Similar to like when people make those bullet coffees and things like that. And given that you've added four cups of water to this broth that you're making, you'll have a couple of batches to drink throughout the day when you're not feeling well. But you can take this broth up another level. Another ingredient that was revered in ancient times is garlic. 
And if you can handle garlic, you're going to want to add that to your onion broth in the making. Now garlic is very rich in antibacterial and antiviral properties, just like onions are, including the skin. Now I know sometimes when people are not feeling well, they can find garlic difficult to tolerate. They can find it may uh, cause them to have maybe a little acid uh, indigestion or a little reflux, things like that. Uh, but generally in the broth, it should hopefully be mild enough to be tolerated. But if you do find that you have problems with garlic, then you can certainly leave this out. The onion broth just as is, is perfect. But we're going to go ahead and boost this and we're going to add this entire bulb of garlic. And all we're going to do is first I'm going to just try to get some of this. Sorry, I think it sounds crunchy. I'm just going to get some of this uh, garlic uh, peel off of here, garlic skin. Get every little bit in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this right in half to expose all the cloves. All righty. There we go, we've got that cut, and I'm just going to go ahead and drop that down into my soup pot. Now if you want to stop at this point and just make your onion and garlic broth, that's perfect. But if you want to try the third variation, then we're going to add in some fresh ginger. And now if you've left out the garlic and you just want to go ahead and add in fresh ginger to your onions, that works too. Now I've got about a three inch piece or so here of ginger, and this is fresh ginger. Uh, if you have powdered ginger, the ground powdered ginger, you can certainly use that as well. You'd probably want to start with about uh, maybe a half a teaspoon up to a teaspoon and then taste it and experiment and see what you like uh, so that it's not too strong. Now my ginger is organic, so I'm not going to peel it, but if your ginger isn't organic and you want to peel it, certainly you can go ahead and do that. But I'm going to use the whole thing and ginger like its onion and garlic friends here, is very high in antibacterial properties, antiviral properties. And the nice thing about all of this, we're really focusing on antibacterial and antiviral properties. These also have anti-inflammatory properties. So that's nice because when you are feeling sick, you do have a lot of inflammation. So it helps on that level as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and just, I'm just going to chop this up just into slices like this to try to release as much as the ginger juice as much of the ginger juice as possible. And I'll go ahead and put that right into the soup pot along with the onion and the garlic. Ginger we know today is wonderful for us. So I really like to add that to this onion broth, uh, whether you put in the garlic or not, because overall I find that the ginger really helps add a nice level of flavor, especially if you find that just the plain onion broth is a little strong for you. The ginger, although is does have a strong flavor, it helps moderate, so to speak, the onion flavor, and it makes for a broth that I think is actually very soothing. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put this on my stove. I'm going to bring it up to a boil, and then we'll put the lid on. We'll turn it down to the lowest setting that I have on my stove, and then I'll let it simmer for about 30 minutes. Another thing I want to mention about the ginger if when you have a cold or the flu and you feel like you have the chills, ginger can be wonderful for helping you feel better and feel relieved from that feeling of chills because it's a very warming spice. While that's simmering on my stove, I just want to share with you uh, my thoughts about integrative medicine. If you've been with me for a while, you've probably heard me talk about this before, but it's an area I find very fascinating because it takes the best of modern medicine, but it supports that with these traditional remedies, these uh, home remedies, these natural remedies, as well as many other things. And because I really believe, you know, when you're sick, you definitely want to be in touch with your doctor. You, know, you don't want to take any chances and often, especially depending on what level of illness that you have, that might be very serious. And there are a lot of uh, things that modern medicine can do to help us. Yet it's so nice to have these home remedies and natural remedies in our arsenal, so to speak, to provide us with some soothing comfort. And also these natural remedies can help you know, build up our immunity and boost our immunity. And also in the case of if you're eating onions or garlic, these are known as prebiotics and they feed the 
probiotics. <laughs> I'm saying that right. I know probiotics, I think. <laughs> but in any event, the prebiotics fill the probiotics and the probiotics are that good bacteria that live in our gut. And scientists tell us that the more good bacteria we have in our gut, the healthier we are. And speaking of the, the onion that we used and the garlic and the ginger, even after we strain the broth, don't throw those out. You can do various things with them. You can puree them and then you can add them to soups or you can just put them in a bag and throw them into your freezer. And then when you get ready to make bone broth, which we've made a lot of bone broth together, when you get ready to make bone broth, you can just pull out those scraps and throw them into your bone broth. Might a lot of the nutrition be extracted from them by the broth we're making today? Yes, but I always feel there's always a little something more that you can pull out of these things. And so there's no need to throw it out. But speaking of integrative medicine, if this is a topic that interests you where modern medicine is also combined with traditional types of medicine and healing practices, I highly recommend books by Dr. Andrew Weil. I really find him fascinating. He's a Harvard educated medical doctor and yet he went ahead and founded uh, the School of Integrative Medicine at the University of Arizona. And this school is in conjunction, I gather, with the medical school where doctors can go, or doctors in training maybe, or maybe even people who already are doctors who want this additional training, can go and learn about all of the various alternative uh, medical practices, medical remedies, so on and so forth, that are alternative to modern medicine. And so by educating these doctors, they know all the modern things, but now they learn all of the traditional ways of healing. And then they're able to integrate them into treating their patients. And I just think that's wonderful. So if you open the description underneath this video, I'll put some information about Dr. Andrew Weil, if that's a subject that interests you, integrative medicine. And speaking of the description, if you open the description underneath this video, uh, look for the word recipe and there'll be a link to it. And you can click on that. It'll take you over to my website and you can print out the recipe to what we're doing today. And it's very basic, uh, but I'll have some variations and some other information over there that you might find helpful. And if you're interested in immune boosting foods and natural home remedies, I'll be sure to link to my playlist where I have all the videos that I've done on this subject. And I'll put that in the iCards and I'll also put that in the description below. So I think you'll find that very interesting. I've made turmeric tea, I've made mineral broths, I've made elderberry syrup, all sorts of things. There's many uh, various home remedy recipes and immune booster recipes in that playlist. Well, I brought this up to a boil, I covered it, and then I turned it down to low, let it simmer uh, for 30 minutes, and now we're ready to strain it. Well, this turned out to be a lovely golden color. Now, I used a yellow onion. If all you had was a white onion or a red onion, you can certainly use that too. They're all very similar. Some bring little different benefits, little different properties uh, to the broth, but any onion will work. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just strain out the broth from the solids. Now, as I said, don't discard this. You can blend this up with a little of the broth or other broth that you might have, and uh, then you might just have to strain out a few little bits that don't get completely pul pulverized, but you'll have a wonderful, uh, very nutrient-rich soup. And or the other option is just save these, throw them into your uh, bag, whatever you keep in your freezer or your fridge for your scraps for when you're ready to make bone broth, and then go ahead and just throw these in. Now at this point, you can drink this just as is, just like you would a tea. Or if you want, you can put a little sea salt. I just have the wet uh, gray sea salt here. It's the coarse ground. I like this one very much. It's very mineral rich. And you can go ahead and add that into your mug and then go ahead and pour in your broth. I find that the salt does uh, help with the flavor. Now we'll give this a taste as is, and then we're gonna go ahead and add in the ghee, and I'll show you the best way to do that if you want to emulsify it. Okay, this is hot, but let's give it a try. Mmm. 
I think you're going to find this really pleasant with the ginger. It really helps moderators soften the strong flavors associated with onion and garlic. And I just think this is so soothing also just by the fact that it's a warm beverage when you have a cold or flu. Now, if you want to take this one step further and add in your ghee, now you could also add butter if that agrees with you, uh, you know, when you're under the weather. And if you want to just keep it completely dairy free, you can add a little coconut oil. Now you can go ahead. What I've got here is a, a teaspoon full of ghee. And I feel that that's an appropriate amount for about this much of broth. This is somewhere between eight to 12 ounces of broth. And then you can just go ahead and you can stir it right into your warm broth and it'll just dissolve. And some people are fine with this method. And the nice thing about adding a little fat to this, if it does agree with you, is that, you know, when you're under the weather, is that fat helps the body absorb the nutrients that are in onions and garlic and ginger and also any kind of, you know, vegetables. Now, some people don't, I'm just stirring this and letting it dissolve and watching it, but some people don't like the mouthfeel of when they add a little bit of fat to broth. They prefer to emulsify it and then that way it's, it almost becomes like a creamy type beverage and it's quite pleasant. But we'll give this a try just as it is. You'll see that the uh, fat does sort of congeal on the top and some people don't have a problem with that but other people you know because in many ways it's kind of like chicken soup uh, when it's made with a whole chicken and the fat isn't strained off and they leave that in because it does add nutrition uh, when you're taking chicken soup you know for a, co a cold or the flu and if you mix it up it's not too bad at all mmm Oh, and that adds a really nice flavor. I really like that. But what I want to show you is that if you want to go ahead and blend it, it's very easy to do. I've just got my old Vitamix here. This is over 30 years old, but it's still going strong. Uh, but you can also do this in a regular blender. You don't need anything fancy. But I had this out on my counter in the back. So I figured I'd just go ahead and use this and uh, we're just going to go ahead and pour it in and we're going to whirl it for about 30 to 60 seconds. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to do my best to get this in here without making too much of a mess. <laughs> Perfect. Now I want to mention that this broth will stay fresh in your refrigerator for at least three to four days, maybe even a little longer. Uh, but you can also make this in advance and freeze it and have, on, have it on hand when you do come down with a cold or flu and not have to worry about having to make it. And you can go ahead and put this in your freezer. I like to store it in one cup containers or two cup containers, you know, two cup size container. And it will definitely stay fresh in your freezer for at least two to three months without developing you know, any ice crystals. You could also uh, put it into ice cube trays and just throw one cube into a cup of tea that has other flavors in it. So there you have a lot of options available to you. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. And as I said, <laughs> sorry, uh, I'm just gonna uh, whirl this about 30 seconds or so. And, you know, somewhere between 30 to 60 seconds will be enough to emulsify it. And whenever you're uh, blending a hot liquid, you always want to make sure that you do vent it, that you let a little air out. So if you're using a regular blender and it has the, the little uh, opening on top where the uh, sometimes a plastic piece goes on top uh, to keep things from sputtering out, you just want to loosen it a little so any steam can come out. My Vitamix does not have a top. This is completely open. So when I use it with hot liquids, I usually just put a, what's this called, dish towel over it. Alrighty, here we go. Well, I whirled this for just about 30 seconds and it's beautifully emulsified. Look at that. And it's still quite warm. So I'm going to use my teaspoon to take a taste and see how this came. It's nice with a little bit of foam on top. Mmm. Oh, that's nice. 
It tastes very similar uh, to when the ghee was just melted in there, but it's kind of fun having that little bit of foam on top. It's got a little bit of a smoother flavor. Uh, so if this is something that you would enjoy, definitely uh, try it, try putting it in the blender. Well, I hope you'll give this a try. I think you're gonna find it very soothing if you have a cold or flu. And if you're interested in learning more home remedies and immune boosting foods, be sure to click on this video over here where I have a whole playlist of all sorts of natural remedies, many of which uh, go back to my childhood and use very simple ingredients that I think everybody has on hand. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.